good afternoon everyone just a couple things to pass along and then we'll get right to your questions today the Department of Defense deployed four US Army vessels from Joint Base Langley Eustis to meet the eastern to the eastern Mediterranean in support of humanitarian assistance operations in Gaza and the mission to build a temporary pier the US Army vessel SP4 James A Lou U.S. Army Vessel Monterey, U.S. Army Ves Vessel Matamoros, and U.S. Army Vessel Wilson Wharf from the 7th Transportation Brigade Expeditionary all departed earlier today, carrying the equipment and supplies needed to support this mission. Once in theater, these vessels and their crews will establish a roll-on, roll-off pier capability that allows ship-to-shore humanitarian assistance to the people of Gaza. We expect the pier to be fully operational in approximately 60 days, which will be able to facilitate the delivery of up to 2 million meals daily. Also on the humanitarian assistance front this morning, U.S. Central Command and the Royal Jordanian Air Force conducted another combined airdrop into northern Gaza, where U.S. Air Force C-130s dropped over 5,280 pounds of food, including rice, flour, pasta, and canned food. Since March 2nd, U.S. Central Command has conducted eight humanitarian assistance airdrops into Gaza to provide essential relief to civilians affected by the ongoing conflict. C-130s and their air crews have dropped over 204,000 meals, 48,000 bottles of water, and more than 5,000 pounds of food items. Separately, today the Department of Defense announced additional security assistance via the Presidential Drawdown Authority as an extraordinary measure to address some of Ukraine's most pressing security and defense needs. This package is the 55th tranche of assistance and is valued at up to $300 million and includes capabilities to support Ukraine's immediate air defense, artillery, and anti-tank requirements. The capabilities in this announcement include Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, additional ammunition for HIMARS, 155-millimeter artillery rounds, including high-explosive and dual-purpose improved cluster munition rounds, 105-millimeter artillery rounds, AT-4 anti-armor systems, additional rounds of small arms ammunition, demolitions munitions for obstacle clearing, spare parts, maintenance, and other ancillary equipment. Now, to be clear, we were able to provide this PDA due to negotiated savings on contracts to replace equipment from previous drawdowns for Ukraine. As a result of these cost savings, we were able to authorize a new PDA package for Ukraine today without additional significant impacts to U.S. military readiness. But this does not change the fact that we urgently need Congress to pass DOD's supplemental request. Today's PDA package, while providing urgent capabilities to Ukraine's forces, is nowhere near enough, and the only way to meet Ukraine's battlefield needs is for Congress to swiftly pass the supplemental. With that, I'll be glad to take your questions. Start with AP, uh, Lita Baldor on the phone, I believe. Hi, Pat. Yes, thank you. Um, can you just two quick follow-ups on, on what you sort of announced? Uh, is there a location yet for where this um, new pier is going to be uh, in Gaza? And is the U.S. participating in any way in any of the other currently ongoing marine vessel aid deliveries to Gaza. And then I have a question on the aid, but if you want to do those two first. Thanks, Lita. Uh, so in terms of uh, the specific location of the pier, uh, I, I don't have that to provide to you. For OPSEC, I'm not, I don't think we're going to provide that in advance. But of course, as the, the pier starts to become constructed, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to obviously keep you in the loop on that. Uh, in terms of the, the ongoing uh, delivery of aid via the sea uh, that I think you've seen in the press. Uh, to my knowledge, there is no DOD uh, participation in that other than the broader discussion of, of how we can uh, complement ongoing international efforts to uh, ensure that aid gets into Gaza. Secondly, um, on the, uh, so on the, the aid, I think a lot of people are a little confused about sort of the Pentagon for the second time finding money, like you're finding quarters in the couch kitchen, the cushions. So can you explain, initially we were told several months ago that the military had um, not anticipated the cost of some of the replacement. So some of the replacement was more than what they originally budgeted. So the military, the Pentagon is in the hole. 
Now we're told in some cases they um, thought that it was going to cost more than it actually cost. So it's it's kind of contradictory. Do you think you're starting to lose credibility on this issue? No, not not at all, Lita. And and to explain, you know, we're talking about uh, two different things here. One, there's the the authorization uh, to expend funds uh, to to buy equipment uh, for Ukraine, and then there's the replenishment funds. And of course, we're we're out of replenishment funds. Uh, and so, what what you heard the White House uh, announce earlier today is when we sent Ukraine weapons last year, the DoD negotiated contracts to replenish those weapons into U.S. stockpiles. Uh, and because of those negotiations, uh, you know, we, we budgeted the full amount uh, of appropriated funds for those contracts. But because of those negotiations, uh, those contracts came in under budget. And so we have a modest amount of funding available. Uh, and, and this happens from time to time. But of course, it's not something you can plan for. You can't plan for budget savings on contracts. Uh, and so, as I highlighted on the top, we're able to use these cost savings to make up uh, this modest amount of new security assistance available right now without significantly impacting military readiness. Uh, because of, of the situation in Ukraine, obviously, they are in an existential fight. They have an urgent need for help. So this is a way that we can provide uh, a small amount of assistance urgently right now but as I also highlighted, it in no way uh, changes the need uh, for a supplemental to fully fund and, and be able to provide Ukraine with the kinds of capabilities they need to defend their country and sustain this fight. Thank you. Let me go into the room here, Orn. Uh, Follow-up question on the aid to Ukraine. Presumably the $300 million wasn't found all at once. It built up to that point. Why, why wait until it was at this point instead of announcing a you know, half that, 150 million weeks ago, as you were already warning, the situation was dire. Yeah, so a couple of things. So uh, this um, covers multiple contracts. Uh, and as I understand it, as those negotiations uh, came to conclusion, it's only been in the last couple of weeks that we've been able to identify the full amount uh, that could be made available to do this. Uh, and so, of course, uh, that's why we're announcing it now, because of the urgent need to be able to to provide what we can, again, recognizing the fact that at the end of the day, what we really need is the supplemental. Thank you. Laura. Right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> two questions. First of all, um, since you were able to cobble together this uh, amount of cost savings, are there additional potential cost savings you're looking at for other contracts to be able to send additional aid to Ukraine? And then I have a follow up. So, so the short answer is no. Um, I mean, again, as I mentioned, you can't necessarily plan for budget savings. It's not like you can say, well, because I'm buying bulk, I can assume that I'm going to get this amount. Um, and so it, it's not a sustainable way to support Ukraine for the long term, which is, again, why we really need uh, this supplemental past. And then I think you mentioned um, in your initial readout that you're sending Depickums, additional Depickums. Can you say how many you're sending? Is this the second or third time that you are sending a tranche of Depickums? And what is the dud rate of the Depickums that you're sending? Yeah, so I no, I can't provide numbers uh, for operational security reasons, Laura. And I'd, I'd point you back to our previous statements on Depickums. I don't, I don't have uh, in front of me, you know, the number of announcements we've made. As you highlight, we have provided them in the past. Uh, so I'd, I'd refer you back to those. On the dead rate? Yeah, I don't, I don't have any information. To, I don't have any information to pass on that. Tom? Thanks, Gerald. Um, just one clarification on the uh, aid to Gaza and then a question on Ukraine. So you said on Friday it was going to be 60 days from Friday, and then today you just said it's going to be 60 days. So is it 60 days from today or is it 60 days from last 60 Friday? 60 days-ish. From last Friday-ish. Yeah. So within 60 days. So, I mean, count from the day that we made the announcement, but, I mean, 60 days that this they'll be operational thank you and then um on the ukraine aid um how soon will the artillery that you described the artillery rounds actually get to the battlefield and do you see it as shifting the needle much for ukraine so a couple things um, i'm not going to provide you with a specific date that this aid will uh, arrive other than to say we've been doing this for a while uh, U.S. Transportation Command, working with the Security Assistance Group Ukraine, uh, has uh, processes in place to ensure that this aid can be delivered as quickly as possible. So it's going to be fast. 
in, in terms of the impact on Ukraine, uh, it will give them uh, some much needed capability uh, that will likely last uh, in the week's time frame, uh, but nowhere n even close to what they need to be able to continue to sustain this fight, which is why we'll continue to work very closely with Congress to get the funding that we need to be able to support Ukraine in the way they need to be supported. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, General. Do you have any updates on the HMC meetings with the Iraqi government? Have you got any understanding with them about the future presence of the U.S. forces in Iraq? Sure. Um, I, I really don't have anything substantive to provide at this point in terms of updates. I mean, as you highlight, the higher military commission meetings do continue. Uh, and so certainly as we have additional information to provide on the status of those, we'll, we'll make that available. Based on the fiscal year budget that you published yesterday, there's an increase of the amount that funded to the Iraqi government and also to the Kurdish Peshmerga. Does that mean that you're going to stay for the whole year in 2025, despite the outcome, the results of that HMC meetings, and why there's an increase of that funds? Yeah, again, I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of the outcomes of the HMC as, as we have updates to provide. We certainly will. Uh, as it relates to Iraq, you know, I, I don't have the budget right in front of me, so I don't want to speak to specific budget line items other than to say we value Iraq as a partner. We're, we're longstanding partners. Uh, and when it comes to supporting Iraq and security assistance, you know, those are things that we that we obviously look at. Um, but beyond that, I'm not going to have anything further. To stay in 2025. I, I, like I said, I'm not going to get ahead of the HMC discussions. I don't have anything. Uh, right now, you're asking me to speculate on the future. You know, we obviously have a long-standing bilateral security relationship with Iraq, but you know, just leave it at that. Let me go to the phone here real quick. Jeff Shogel, Task and Purpose. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any attackums in this security package? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Jeff, I don't, I don't have anything to announce on attackums. Uh, again, as I highlighted uh, in the top there, uh, what this package does contain are. Uh, critical munitions uh, to include additional ammunition for HIMARS, uh, the, the 155 millimeter rounds, uh, which Ukraine obviously desperately needs right now, but uh, no nothing to announce uh, on attackums. Uh, let me go here. Uh, Patrick Tucker, Defense One. Uh, thanks. Uh, that, that was my question, but I guess I'd follow up with, um, given the current state of the front line and uh, what officials have said about uh, the current state of Ukrainian artillery and supplies and Russian supplies. Is there uh, any urgency in, in maybe getting them something different like attackums, or is there any discussion about different packages that can go now that perhaps wouldn't have gone before when the battlefield looked a little bit more favorable to Ukraine? Yeah, thanks, Pat. Um, so again, uh, you know, what, what we're announcing today is, is what we're able to, um, you know, provide, uh, unexpectedly in the sense that we were able to put these funds together to get them these uh, critical capabilities now. What we really need is a, the supplemental approved so that we can provide the kinds of capabilities they require long term. Uh, again, nothing, nothing to announce today uh, as it relates to attackums. Um, but again, uh, you know, going forward, we'll certainly keep you updated on, on any developments. Sir. Uh, thank you, General. So on the, um, you mentioned it was about 60 days to construct the pier to deliver the aid. Um, my question is, why are we not using um, Ashdod Pier? It's a pier roughly 30 kilometers north of Gaza in Israel, which would seem to be an easier task just to use an existing pier rather than create a new one. Yeah, so this is the mission the Department of Defense has been given. It's a capability that we have. Uh, as I highlighted, uh, it will enable upwards of 2 million meals to be delivered per day. Um, but to your point, this is just part of a bigger effort, uh, an international effort to get aid into Gaza. And so I, I am a, you know, aware that there are other efforts uh, uh, but as for that specific facility. Um, you know, I don't have anything to provide on that. But again, in addition to our maritime efforts, the airdrops, uh, and then USAID working uh, to, with partners in the region to open and expand the land routes, um, we will continue to do our part as the Department of Defense. Again, cognizant of the fact that this is not just us. There's a, a much broader effort. Thank okay. you. So are we not using that here because Israel's not letting us use that here? Uh, I, I don't think Israel said we can or can't. The Department of Defense has been given a mission to provide uh, this capability. It's something that we have the ability to do, and so it's something that we're going to do. Let me go to Louis. Uh, General, um, 
who initiated this review of the assessment of the re you know looking back at uh, um, at the readjustment of costs um, that is being announced today as part of this PDA, and there's been some reporting that it could go as high as 400 million. Does that mean that there is an additional 100 million that is that you're sitting on, or is that uh, just preliminary information? Yeah. So as I understand it, Louis, I mean this is this is part of the process of accounting is uh, when any of the services are provided with funding to do replenishment and they negotiate those contracts. It, it's not an unprecedented thing to come back with cost savings and then you turn those funds back over to the department to be put into the, the broader pool. Uh, so that's just the course of doing business. And as I highlighted, because this uh, was related to multiple contracts, uh, as it became clear that there were going to be these funds available, and as it in over the last couple of weeks, as we were able to determine how much could be available, uh, you know, uh, with confidence, that was the decision to be made. Um, and, and as I highlighted, I don't anticipate right now that we're going to be able to do future PDAs like this, um, but certainly not in a sustainable way. So this was not initiated as a top-down initiative, let's say, from the secretary saying, look for anything possible uh, any any financing possible that could allow for the replenishment as, as I understand it as the, the services you know and uh, they look at those things uh, it becomes clear hey there's additional funding here we'll put it back in the pot how, how could we use that in a way that supports Ukraine in the in the near term let me go back to the phone here Chris Gordon Aaron space uh, thanks Pat um, so now that you've found these funds, is there a renewed push to look around for more savings to find more money since it is possible? Is there any prospect of savings uh, among the other services, not just the Army? Yeah, again, Chris, as I highlighted, this is not a sustainable way to support Ukraine. Uh, and so uh, th this, in a lot of ways, is, a, as I understand it, a, a one-time good deal right now. Um, but, you know, we're going to continue to work closely with Congress to try to get the funding that we need uh, to the broader strategic point of they need to win this fight. Uh, and it matters because not only is it important for Ukraine, but it, it matters for international security to include United States security if Russia were able to, to win this fight. Okay, take a couple more. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry. A question regarding the 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. The final version of the 2024 defense bill says Iraqi security forces and Kurdish Peshmerga forces to be equipped with, with air defense systems to encounter attack by missiles, rockets, and unmanned systems. To your knowledge, is there any practical action in this regard? Well, we're still waiting for the 2024 budget to be passed. Uh, so at, at this point, you know, that's that's step one. So again, we call on Congress to pass that budget, uh, at which time we may have more to, to talk about. Thank you. Last question, Carla. Oh, great. I'll take clean up. Um, three questions then. Um, so first, uh, General Carrillo last week said that the most important thing to securing the Red Sea was interdiction efforts to prevent Iran from resupplying. Has there been an increase of U.S. interdiction efforts to try to stop this resupply? Uh, thanks, Carla. Yeah, I mean, it is obviously uh, an important mission. It's something, you know, that we've been doing for a while in the Middle East region. Uh, U.S. Central Command uh, forces have been working with partners uh, and, and allies in the region for many years on the interdiction effort. But but to your point and, to, and the point that General Carrillo was underscoring is that if there are these uh, illegal shipment of arms, uh, capabilities, weapons, uh, that, that we have a responsibility to interdict those to prevent them from getting into the hands of terrorists. I mean, as, as you know, um, this is something, for example, that we've seen Iran sponsor in the past. Uh, it's certainly something that, you know, that they do to try to provide capabilities to the Houthis. And so we will continue to work closely with, with partners in the region to, to uh, help deter and prevent that from happening. Okay, and then two on Ukraine. First, there have been reports, uh, Russian reports, that two Patriots were destroyed in eastern Ukraine. Can you confirm? And is the, the U.S. considering replacing those if they have been destroyed due to the importance of air defense? Yeah, when, when it comes to Ukrainian capabilities and, and talking about the status of their equipment, that's something I'd refer you to the Ukrainians to talk about. Okay, and then lastly, uh, when we're talking about this latest aid package, 
Uh, there has been this podium, you know, you've said that, um, Sabrina has said that there's a risk in giving um, part of the $4 billion left in the PDA um, because there is an, uh, an ability to replenish those funds. But what is the risk in giving Ukraine things that the Army no longer uses that do not need to be replenished, like 155 millimeter cluster munitions or M113s? Um, I'm not sure I'm following what you mean. Is there a risk in giving them things from the Pentagon stockpile that the, the Army doesn't use, like 155 cluster munitions? Yeah, so as I understand it, the capabilities that we're providing to them are obviously combat capable, effective capabilities, things that they can employ on the battlefield, right? So um, I'm not, not sure I'm tracking uh, what, what you're asking, but the bottom line is they're in a fight, they have requirements, as best we can, we're going to work with them and our international allies and partners to get them what they need as quickly as they can uh, to include from our own stockpiles or in some cases, if there are capabilities that um, we don't necessarily draw from our stockpiles, we're going to contract them out, for example, to the USAI program. Uh, so just leave it there. Can I follow yeah. just up because you said you didn't quite understand. If it is confirmed by the Army that they're not using M113 vehicles or they're not using cluster munitions, they're not allowed to use them, is the Pentagon willing to consider those as part of a shipment to Ukraine, which is still authorized under the $4 billion left in PDA? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, so, for example, things that are going to be mothballed and, and things like that. So, you know, the, the bottom line is, uh, Carla, uh, it kind of goes back to what I was saying in terms of uh, they, they're going to have certain needs and we're going to have to be able to deliver capabilities uh, that that are going to be effective or they're going to be able to use them on the battlefield. If something is going out of the inventory, and, and in some ways, I mean, it's just sort of dependent on what we're talking about here, um, there could be costs associated with it. Uh, there could be, um, you know, retrofitting requirements. You know, I'm, I'm getting into hypotheticals here. Um, but the bottom line is we're going to look at ways that we can support their needs. You know, there, there's nobody sitting around saying, well, we got all this ammunition sitting around that we don't need anymore, but let's not give it to Ukraine. Um, so you know, again, uh, without getting into specific systems or, you know, uh, making things up. I mean, the bottom line is we're going to look for ways to support them as best we can. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody. Appreciate it.